In iOS 14, you can now use SwiftUI to make grids of content horizontally or vertically, all lazily. In this video, I'm showing you exactly how it's done, straight into the code, no hassle, no fuss, let's get to it. First things first, you make your data. I'll say to begin with, our data is an array of the numbers one through a thousand. I'm gonna transform that simply by saying uh, dot map. I'll turn this into a string of uh, item dollar zero. So it'll, say, it'll show item one, item two, item three, item four, item five, and so forth. It's a simple example to get it started. We'll do something else later on. Then you define what your layout should be. The rows you want, the columns you want, and if you choose one of the two, what do you want, rows or columns? And there are many ways of defining the size of these items. I'll start off really simple again, and we'll try other ones. So first I'll say, my layout is an array of, and I'll do in here, a single grid item, and I want adaptive layout, minimum size of 80. Now what adaptive layout's gonna do here is say, I want to fill the screen with stuff, adapt how many items you can see on the screen. All I care about is there are 80 points minimum in size. That's the only thing I care about. Otherwise, fill the grid with stuff. And now we can make our grid view, that's it. I'll say there is a scroll view. Inside there, there's a lazy V grid using columns, our layout, and I'll do spacing of 20 as well, so we can have a little bit of space in between rows. Then I'll do for each data, id backslash dot self, go over all our data, and pass me each item coming in. Pass me item one, pass me item two, and so forth. And I'll just wrap that in a SwiftUI text view, and add a little bit of horizontal padding to our uh, lazy V grid like that. So we'll set a little bit of space from the edge, left and right edges. And that's it. We're gonna get an immediate grid up and running, all lazy loaded, so it won't do all the work up front. It'll only create the views as they scroll onto screen, which is much, much nicer. So that's the power of lazy grids right there. Now, if you want multiple things inside your cells, just place the, that text into a V stack or a H stack or even a, a Z stack if you want to. For example, we might say, I want to have here a uh, V stack for my content. And I'll start with a capsule filled with the color blue and with a frame height of 50. And perhaps I give my text a foreground color of secondary. So a slightly more advanced layout, but still fairly simple. And now you should see, boom, fitting four in there with our nice blue capsule above and below. So it's really easy to customize these things. Now, right now we're defining a simple adaptive column layout, but you can customize that. You know, adaptive here, again, will fill the screen with stuff. All we care about is the 80 point in size. Um, if you want to, you could say, actually, I want this to be a flexible layout. I want to use dot flexible instead. And by default, flexible will say, okay, each item in the, in the, in the um, grid, whether that's a column or a row, just fill all the space you have. It acts like a spacer almost. It'll just grow to adapt uh, the, all the available space. So now when I run this back, we're gonna see uh, something very different. We'll see exactly one item per row because they're all filling all their available space. But boom, that's a really simple table view right there. You know, you, you can have a table view on iPhone and add more columns on iPad just by customizing your layout, make it a variable array perhaps. But if you wanted to, you could say, actually, I want to have more than one column still filling up space. So you might say, I want to have grid item flexible, comma, grid item flexible, comma, grid item flexible. I want three flexible width columns. And now we'll see this kind of layout. Boom. So they'll all adapt to fill their space automatically. I can just take one out, get a slightly different result. Now we'll get a two column layout, still flexible. Boom. So it is, as you might imagine, flexible. Um, so all these things take parameters. You can customize them further if you want to. You could say, actually, flexible is great, um, but actually don't take up too much space, right? You know, have a maximum size of 80 points. Um, and that's fine. And now they won't go grow any larger than they have to. So this will sort of center them in the, in the middle. Boom. So you've got sort of a thin column like that. Um, that's great. And if you want to, you can customize, of course, the, the direction. You could say, I want a horizontal grid. And this just requires changing uh, two lines of code. You want to say your scroll view 
is not just a regular scroll view, that's vertical by default, but you want a horizontal scroll view. And you want now a lazy H grid going horizontally. And now we say the rows are that layout. And it'll figure the columns out for us. So let's try that and see how that looks. Boom. There's our layout. So it's all very, very flexible. It's not quite a compositional layout. We had an iOS 13 for UI kit, but it's still very, very nice. Anyway, let's put this together in something slightly more real, not as a load of numbers and um, capsules. Um, ahead of time, I have loaded into here the JSON to show SF symbols, all these things here. It's all the SF symbols names of stuff. Plus, I've also added my personal favorite extension, um, Bundle Decodable. I'll link to that in the description below. Uh, and we can use that to make a little SF symbols browser trivially in Swift UI. So first, what we're going to do is replace our current data with the oops, with the Swift UI data. So up here we have our one through a thousand map. I don't want that anymore. I'm going to say instead uh, bundle dot main dot decode an array of string dot self from symbols dot JSON. Again, that bundle extension will be in the description below. Go and grab that. And now for our uh, scroll view, I want to go back to the old style. I want a vertical scroll view, get rid of the horizontal and do a V grid with columns layout. Boom. Uh, and for our content, um, let's, let's, let's make this thing have perhaps, um, let's do it adaptive again. That was quite nice. Adaptive minimum mm, 100. Looks nice. And for our content down here, I'm going to replace this capsule text thing with the image of system name, uh, the item, and give that a foreground color of dot blue. Uh, text will be our item with dot font, dot caption, and dot bold. Let's see how that looks. So hopefully now we'll get a simple SF symbols list. Boom, lovely. So that's SF symbols being loaded nicely. And to finish off, we can just wrap it in the navigation view. We can do the uh, navigation view up here and then add our scroll view into there. Boom, give it a title. Uh, I'll say SF symbols browser and run it back. Boom, it's like a, a finished app right there and only a handful of lines of code. In fact, that is literally almost all the code right there. Um, there is another kind of uh, grid item type, uh, which is fixed. You can say I want this to be exactly a particular fixed size Maybe you'll want to use that. Uh, I'm not terribly sure, but for me so far, adaptive has been absolutely amazing. It works really, really well out of the box and flexible for the rest of the times. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I make lots more like it, all on teaching you Swift UI, teaching you Swift, and much more completely free. Go ahead and hit like, go and subscribe, and you can find me on Twitter at Two Straws. Take care, folks.